Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new series. In this series I'm going to be showing you how to code a lot of power-ups in Roblox Studio. Starting with this one which is the dash power-up. Uh, each power-up will be compatible with PC and mobile. So if I press E I can dash and if I press this button in here I can also dash. And also before this video starts I want to let you guys know that today is my birthday. So if you guys want to make me happy uh, make sure to subscribe and like the video. Before this video starts, if you guys want to support me and want to have access to all of my project files, including the one you're watching right now, they will all be available in my Patreon in the $10 tier. With that being said, let's start. Okay, so I just created an empty base plate, and what I'm going to do to start this is add a module script to replicate the storage, and I'm going to call it Dash. And I'm going to add a folder to replicate the storage, and rename it to... Um, maybe that maybe uh, uh power ups and i'm going to parent this dash module to the power ups folder and i'm going to change this to a local dash module and return dash dash module and i'm going to create a new function function dash module dot dash and that will take the player as the first argument and the Z force as the second argument and then what I'm going to do is check actually we're going to create a reference to the player's character so local character is equal to player dot character and in here I'm going to check if not character then return and or we can do if character is equal equal to nil then return and and after that we will create a new vector force and we will parent it to the player's primary part so local vector force is equal to instance dot new vector force and uh, vector force vector force oh i spelled it wrong Ve vector force vector force dot and attachment zero is equal to character dot humanoid root part or dot primary part dot root rig attachment and let me show you what this is so if you go ahead and play the game right now by default we have a each player has a uh, an attachment inside of the primary part of the character the humanoid root part and it's called root rig attachment and we're just going to use that attachment for the attachment zero of the vector force. So I'm going to change this to um, root, rig, root rig attachment and vector force dot parent is equal to and character dot primary part. And now that we've created our vector force, what we're going to do is wait around uh, we're gonna do we're gonna add another argument here comma and duration and duration and we can change this to task.wait instead because it's better task.wait duration duration and vector force on destroy and then i'm going to create a cooldown table so local cooldowns is equal to an, an empty table and what we're gonna do here is check if not and square brackets actually cooldowns square brackets player dot name and what this does is it ba it's basically a cooldown for each player so that we don't have a wait here and uh, I don't know how to explain this but if you just have a default cooldown it will basically work for all players and we don't want that to happen so we'll check if not cooldowns player.name then cooldowns player.name is equal to true and that should be it and uh, then what i'm going to do is create a reference to um players service so local players is equal to game get service players 
and I'm going to have a function player added. So local function player added or new player. And I will take the player, obviously, and uh, local function player removing or maybe player leaving, player leaving. And again, that's going to take the player. And what I'm going to do is uh, players dot player removing common connect player leaving so whenever a player is leaving we will call the player leaving uh, function and inside of the player leaving function we'll do if uh, cooldowns square brackets player dot name uh, player dot name is equal equal to true then and actually just if cooldowns player dot name then uh, cooldowns player dot name is equal to nil and that should work and what i'm going to do now is call this module so i'm just going to create a script server script service and i'm going to require the module so local dash is equal to require and game dot replicator storage dot dash not power ups dot uh, power power ups dot dash and i'm going to add a remote event inside of replicated storage and i'm just going to call it a dash and game dot replicated storage dot dash dot on server event common connect function player and uh, dash dot dash and uh, that's going to take the player the uh, z force which will be something like maybe a thousand and the and the duration which would be two seconds and that should work and to call this function what i'm this remote event what i'm going to do is add a script a local script to star gy and i'm going to call it uh, dash underscore client and i'm going to type in local uh actually yes local uis for user input service is equal to game Colon get service and user input service. Uh, user input service and user input service dot input begin colon connect function and input. And then we're gonna check if input dot key code is equal equal to enum dot key code dot e. Then and game dot replicate the storage dot dash on um, fire server. And what I'm going to do is go back to my dash module. And I think in here, we're not removing the cooldown. So in here, local cooldown duration is equal to and maybe three seconds. And task.wait uh, cooldown duration and uh, Cooldowns player dot name is equal to false. And now if we play the game, that should hopefully work. So let's go to our character and uh him no group part. If I just go ahead and press E, it created the vector force, but as you can see it does nothing. And that is because the force is very, very small. And to fix that, I'm just going to go back to my script and I'm going to change this to uh, maybe 10,000. And I'm going to go back here and change this to the X axis. So this is going to be force. And uh, vector force, vector force dot force is equal to and vector three dot new and let's just create a new rig in here just to check what uh direction we're gonna change the force to so i'm just going to select the move tool here and it's the z axis so i'm going to go back here and change this to vector three dot new zero comma zero comma force and that should hopefully work. So if I play the game now, go here, 
player's prog, humanoid R, press E. As you can see, that does work, but as you can see, the force is very, very small. And it's also uh, on the wrong uh, direction. So I'm going to change this to minus force. And I'm going to change this to 100,000. And if I press E now, as you can see, I blew off the map. And that is because this is way too high. So I'm going to change this to 15,000. 1,500, 15,000. And if I just press E now, as you can see, that worked. And it stopped after two seconds. And I'm going to change this to one second instead. So the duration will be one second. And now if I press E, as you can see, it worked, but again, the direction is way too high. So I mean the duration. So I'm going to change this to 0 0.4 or 0.3. So that is just a small fast dash. And yeah, that that works. And as you can see, I can't dash right now. And because there is a three second cooldown, if I press E again, now I can dash. And yeah, what I'm going to do now is just clean this up a bit and show you how to use this. So let's say we want to add mobile support to this, which I'm going to do right now. I'm going to add a screen GUI and I'm going to call it power ups. And I'm going to add a button in here, a text button. And I'm going to resize this. So anchor point, I'm going to change that to 0.5. And the size to scale, so maybe 0 0.1, 0, point, um, 0, 0, 0. And then if I just scale this, it should be now converted to scale. And I'm just going to change this to 103 by 103. If that works. I'm going to put this in here. And I'm going to add a little UI corner to this. And I'm going to change the text to E to dash. Text scale to true. And the font to for Doka one. And the text color to white. And the background color to a nice dark gray. And maybe I can change the E the text to just E and I'm going to rename this to dash maybe you can have like a little image here just that has a running uh, vector a running man vector just so that it indicates that E is for dashing and what I'm going to do is drag this dash client inside of the dash button and I'm also going to add a, instead of just doing this, I'm going to do script.parent, dot button, one click, on connect function, and just copy this and paste it here, and that should work, so it should work with mobile now, so if I just press this, it works, and if I press E, it works, but what if I do it at the same time? As you can see, it works, it doesn't have any bugs. And what I'm going to do now is check if it works if I'm typing something if I, and I press E. And as you can see, that works. So we need to fix that. And to do that, it's very simple. We just have to do input, comma, game, processed, event. And what I'm going to do here is check if input.kcode is equal, equal to E and uh, game processed event, then. And that should work. If I just press E now. Oh, okay, that works. So that is because this should be a not game processed event. Then and that should work now. And as you can see, it works. You can just keep on saying E and it doesn't work. But if I press E and I'm not chatting, then that works. And if I press E and press this at the same time, it still works. There are no bugs with this. 
and yeah that's going to be it for the first part of the series and in this series i'm going to be showing you how to make a lot more power-ups that you can use for your game as i'm learning how to make a good vfx and yeah if you guys like this video please make sure to subscribe like the video share it with your friends and i will see you all in the next video bye